Hey guys, it's Laura. Welcome back. Today's video is going to be my June wrap up. In the month of June, I read a total of 13, or I should say I finished a total of 13 books. And I talked about seven of them in my mid month wrap up. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go check that out. Today, I'm going to talk about the six books I read in the second half of the month, as well as some books that I DNF'd and I'll give you the results of my book haul revisit for the month of June because if you saw that video you'll know that I had quite a few books that I needed to either read or unhaul by the end of June. So we'll get to all that at the end and let's get started with what I read. The first book I picked up was The Crown's Fate by Evelyn Skye. This is the second book to The Crown's Game. The Crown's Game I read um, in the first half of the month. I gave it a five out of five stars. It is set in Russia and it follows these two enchanters named Vika and Nikolai. They are competing in the Crown's Game, which is a game to decide who becomes the imperial enchanter. Whoever loses also loses their life. So it's very high stakes and things get even more complicated when Vika and Nikolai start falling for each other. So the first book I absolutely loved. I gave it a five out of five stars. I thought that it was so beautiful. This book I liked a lot, just not as much. This one was a lot more political. There is a lot of political unrest in Russia at this time, um, specifically because of what happened at the end of the first book, which I won't mention. Because of the heavier political subplot, I feel like a lot of the magic and enchantment of the first book was kind of lost in this one. But I will say that this one had um, a much darker undertone than the first book, which I ended up really enjoying. So after I finished reading this, I gave it a five out of five stars. Loved the way it all wrapped up and came together. But giving it more thought, um, I decided to lower my rating down to a four stars because like I said, I didn't like it as much as the first one. And the first one is just structurally better. So I still really enjoy the series and I highly recommend it if you, not, if you have not picked it up yet. The next book I finished was Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is a adult sci-fi novel and it is the first book in the Expanse series. This takes place in a future where humans have colonized the solar system. There are people living on Earth, on Mars, as well as colonies on the asteroid belt. In this story, we are following two main perspectives. The first perspective is Jim Holden, who is an officer on an ice miner making runs from the rings of Saturn to the asteroid belt. And he is on one such run when they get a distress call from a ship called the Scopuli. So as they are the closest ones to them, they are required to go out and offer assistance. And when they do, they end up discovering something, something huge, a big secret that people will not only kill for, but could change the course of humanity. And because of circumstances surrounding the discovery of this thing, war breaks out between the entire solar system. The second perspective we're following is Detective Miller, who is a detective living in the asteroid belt, when he gets a case assigned to him of a missing person. And as he digs more into it, he discovers that this missing girl is directly related to the Scopuli as well as Jim Holden. And the two perspectives converge and the story kind of goes from there. I ended up really, really enjoying this book. I did not know what to think of it, especially when I first started it. It was really hard to get into. There's a lot of terminology and a lot of like corporations and a lot of different names that are just kind of thrown at you and I would say for the first like 130 pages 150 pages or so it was very difficult to get into but after that it really sucked me in and it became a lot more accessible the more I read. I absolutely loved both perspectives in here. I developed quite a soft spot for Jim Holden. Um, he's one of those very righteous characters and I love that about him. Um, his perspective was all high action, high stakes. However, the detective's perspective had this very noir detective type feel and I loved the combination of those two things coming together. I loved the characters eventually meeting up and seeing their dynamic and I also absolutely loved the world. I loved the setting and the politics of the solar system and how Earth has this tension with Mars and Earth and Mars have this tension with the outer planets and how there's just so much going on in this world. I really ended up enjoying this. I gave it a four out of five stars and I am really excited to continue on with the series. I know that there are a ton of books in this series so far, I think like eight or nine, but I'm excited to get to all of them and eventually watch the TV show because I've been putting that off 
until I read the book, but now I've read the book so I can do that. I then picked up another sci-fi and that is Sleeping Giants by Sylvain Nouvelle. This is the first book in the Themis Files and it is an adult sci-fi. It is told in a very interesting way. It's told in, um, in interviews and uh, documents and like personal journal entries, but there's really not too much I can say about this book um, that won't give away a lot. Basically the story starts out with this little girl named Rose riding her bike one day and then she falls into a hole and lands on this enormous giant metal hand. We fast forward many years, that same little girl Rose is now all grown up and she is a physicist. She gets a job as the lead scientist on this project that is trying to figure out what this giant metal hand is, where it came from, because it seems to be made of some kind of material that we don't have on Earth, as well as if there are possibly more pieces than just the hand and where and how to find them. This is something you really just have to go in and discover for yourself. I know that I'm pretty late to the train because so many people have read this and absolutely loved it. I've heard nothing but good things from people and expected to really enjoy this. I did not expect it to completely blow me away, which it did. I loved everything about this. I loved, oh my goodness, the drama. <laughs> between everyone working on this team was so good. There's also like this unknown um, narrator, or not narrator, but interviewer. So the, per the interviews that take place in here, the person who's doing the interviewing, we don't know much about him. That also added to the mystery of everything that was going on. And the twist at the end of this book, well, I don't know if you can call it a twist, but there's a development at the very end of this book that completely blew my mind and had me dying to pick up the second one. This was so good. <laughs> I read this all in one sitting. I could not put it down and it is, it's been a long time since that's happened for me. So this is just one of the most compelling sci-fi books I've ever read. I gave it a five out of five stars and I am so excited to continue on with the series, which hopefully I will be doing very soon because I need to know what happens next. Next, we have another book that I read all in one day, and that is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. So this is a YA fantasy. So in this book, we're following our main character, Rasmira. She is the daughter of the leader of her village. Every year, the people of her village are required to pay tribute to this god and they fear this god because he's very cruel um, if they don't pay tribute to him then he will come and destroy their entire village their specific village is in charge of a game of providing meat for him and because of this a lot of the times the people go hungry in this world when kids are about eight i think they declare what their chosen profession will be they train for 10 years and when they turn 18 they have to take a trial if they fail their trial then they get sent out on an impossible task. Basically, they're just being condemned to death. So Razmira has chosen to be a warrior. She's the only female warrior in her village. And because of this, she gets picked on and bullied a lot. She is the best warrior in her village. However, her trial goes horribly wrong. And so because she failed her trial, she has been tasked to go out into the dangerous wild and kill this immortal god. I ended up really loving this. Rasmira as a character is just so badass and not in the typical way. I mean, yes, she's a warrior. She, she's strong physically, but I really felt for her as a character because her father, who is leader of the village, does not have any sons. All he has is daughters, I believe six daughters, and she is the only one that he really pays attention to because she has chosen to be a warrior. And because she has chosen to be a warrior, he treats her as if she's a boy. He makes her cut her hair and he tells her that she can't cry, she can't show emotion because that's weakness. And when she finally gets the chance to be away from her father, she realizes that she has a right to feel the way she feels. She has a right to her feelings and if she wants to cry, she will damn well cry. And I absolutely loved the strength that she found in herself, not from being this badass warrior, but from being a woman. And I just thought it was full of so much girl power and just like amazing feelings. It was full of action. It was just, it was so good. Again, I couldn't put it down, read it all in one go. And I highly, highly recommend this. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. There were certain times where the uh, the writing or the pacing was a little bit off, but other than that, I really, really enjoy this. I highly recommend it. Second to last, we have Touched by an Angel by Jonathan Morris. This is a Doctor Who book. If you're new here, hi, I am the biggest Doctor Who fan. And I've recently started reading the Doctor Who novels. I have to say, I was really looking forward to this one in particular because it's one of the more highly rated 
books didn't feel that it was all that great but this fo follows the 11th doctor with um the companions of amy and rory and the villain the main villain in the story is of course the weeping angels a few problems with this first of all there was problematic things in this book as well as the fact that sometimes the writing wasn't the best in my opinion also i feel like i didn't get enough of the doctor whenever the doctor and amy and rory were on the page it was great but when they weren't which was the majority of the time to be honest it wasn't so this reminded me a lot of the episode blink if you're familiar with doctor who you'll know what i'm talking about but in that episode it was mostly about sally sparrow and the doctor kind of popped in here and there that's what this book was we were more so following our main character and the story around him and then we cut back to the doctor at certain points but i just feel like we didn't get enough screen time with him so i ended up giving this a three out of five stars i'm definitely looking forward to reading more doctor who novels but this one was not as great as i was hoping it would be and the very last book that i finished in the month of june was the kingdom of back by marie lu so i've read a couple marie lu books before and i have to say that me and marie don't always agree i knew from the beginning when this book came out that i wasn't going to be interested in it but i heard so many people talking about how amazing this book was and the hype kind of got to me. So I picked it up, I listened to the audiobook, and I have to say it was actually a very beautiful story. If you don't know, this um, is the story of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's sister. She's kind of never mentioned in history. She was a very talented musician, just like her brother, but she couldn't pursue her passion to compose because she was a woman. And this story kind of gave her a voice and also had this magical element. The Mozart siblings um, in real life created this magical imaginary world called the Kingdom of Bat. And in this book, Marie Lu kind of made it an actual place. I have to say that this book was beautifully told. It was the best written of the Marie Lu books that I have read. I can definitely see why people would absolutely love this, but I just did not feel connected to the story at all. I ended up giving it a three out of five stars, which is not a bad rating. I still enjoyed my time reading it but it wasn't anything special, which is what I was expecting. But I was hoping for more because so many people talked about how this is amazing, it's one of their favorite books of the year. I just felt very disconnected from the story. Honestly, I just don't jive well with Marie Lou's writing for whatever reason. But yeah, three out of five stars, still an excellent book, just not exactly for me. So those were all the books that I finished, but these were the other books that were a part of the list of books that I either had to read or unhaul by the end of June. So let's go through them. Um, the first one here is Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. This is the second book in the Monsters of Verity duology. The first book being The Savage Song, which I hadn't read. So in order to get to this one, I would have to have read the first one, which I did. I did read the first one, um, Actually, I finished it in, in this month, in July, rather than June. But since I have read the first one, I've decided that it's okay for me to keep the second one because I do want to continue. I loved the first one. You'll hear more about it in a future wrap up, but this one is safe. I've decided that if I have a subsequent book in a series on one of these lists and I've started the first one, then that should be enough for me to keep it. Um, the next one I have here, actually the next two, are Wind Witch and Sight Witch by Susan Dennard. And again, with this one, I didn't get to them, but because I started the first book in the series, Truth Witch, I'm going to go ahead and keep these on my shelf as well. The next one is Blowback 07. This is by Brian Meal. I did give this one a shot. I started reading it and I knew pretty early on, like within the first 30 pages, that I was not going to enjoy this. The story hadn't even gotten started yet, but, but the main character is a teenage boy and I just couldn't handle the language, the way they talked and the way they talked about girls. I just, I couldn't deal with it. I skimmed ahead a little bit to see if I could figure out where the story started and just like skip over all the nonsense, but it didn't quite work out that way either. So I ended up just deciding to DNF this. Um, and I'm going to unhaul it. I've never heard anyone talk about this book, and to be honest, I'm just not, I'm just not interested in it anymore. The next book is The Brilliant Death. This is by Amy Rose Capetta. I was really looking forward to this because I really loved the book that she co-wrote with Cory McCarthy, Once in Future. This one, however, 
It's a um, an Italian inspired world and it follows this like mafia family and the daughter, what was her name? Teodora. Um, she is a strega and she's one of the only strega she knows. However, she ends up meeting another one, like something happens to her father and she has to uh, face the prince and in order to do that she has to learn to transform herself into a boy. There's a lot of things that were good about this, it was interesting. I didn't get very far in, I think I got like, uh, yeah I got like 120 pages in and just decided that I wasn't interested in it, I wasn't caring about the main character or the plot or really anything. I think the world was somewhat interesting but it just wasn't enough to keep me going. So I DNF'd this one at around 120 pages and I'm going to unhaul this one as well. And then the last book is Again But Better by Christine Riccio. And this is another one that I decided to DNF. Just a few chapters in, not far at all, before I realized I just did not care. Nothing against the book at all. I'm sure there's a lot of people that will like this. I just found the the voice of the main character to be a little annoying at times, and I just didn't care to continue. I feel like so far in 2020, I've been having a harder time reading YA, contemporary for sure, but YA in general. I don't really think it's because of my age. I don't think I've outgrown YA. I don't really think that that is a thing, but I, I'm just having a harder time with it and I'm being way more selective than I've ever been with my YA. Um, and this one just didn't have anything to offer me, but that's fine. Not every book is for every reader and I just have to accept that. So there's my update for my book haul revisit series for the month of June. I was very nervous about this month because there were so many books on the list that I just hadn't read yet. But I'm actually really happy with the way my reading turned out this month. Um, these are the books that I'm going to be unhauling and these are the books that were saved. Hoping to get to these very, very soon. I'm very excited to get to Wind Witch because I'm just dying to dive back into this world. It is one of my favorites. And there you go, that is it for today's video. All the books that I read in the month of June, the books that I DNF'd and how I ended up doing reading all the books I needed to this month. Do let me know down in the comments if you have any thoughts or opinions on the books that I've talked about today. I would love to hear from you down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys!